everybody. Um, interesting that you give me the floor a second uh, due to the fact that we have very experienced people around the table, but uh, I will uh, start my intervention. Um, <laughs> I will start my intervention um, uh, basically uh, with Kosovo. Um, first of all, I think it is to mention that Kosovo has shown really impressive progress um, especially in how to handle uh, minority policies. Um, I mean, sure, there's still the dispute and still the conflict or, or the, the, the still lasting also political conflict, how to solve um, the, the relations with Serbian and with the Serbian minorities. But the way Kosovo deals with minorities as such can be quite um, uh, representing uh, the effort uh, of the Kosovo government to, to show that uh, um, uh, a vital minority policy is possible and how it can be done on the Balkans. Uh, sure, I mean, Kosovo is still um, under the impression of the wars uh, and um, under the impression of the violence. I think that uh, something that we, I'm, I'm very looking forward to is a generational change, which is starting to happen also on the political level uh, between uh, the generation that has participated in the war and the generation that um, grew up or that uh, started their career after the war. Uh, the difference, uh, to my point of view, is uh, the history that you personally bring into the political process. Uh, if you were affected or were participating uh, in, a, in a war that is all, always um, uh, a very cruel thing, a very um, um, uh, leaves an impression into your life that I think you can hardly overcome. Uh, this frames the way you see politics, and this also frames the way uh, of your capability to compromise. Um, and so, so I really welcome that change. Also, you see now in the, in the Kosovo parliament uh, that you have new members um, of the parliament that grew up with different political circumstance. Uh, the concerns I still have um, about Kosovo is, and this is actually a concern that, that uh, uh, can be applied for, for the biggest parts of the Balkans, of the Western Balkans, is the question uh, uh, on, on the gap between theory and practice. Yes, in theory there is a certain implementation of laws that, that uh, apply and comply uh, with the rules that we have in Europe. but. The question whether they are put in practice as they theoretically should is very often to be answered with a no or partly no. And to me, the question is, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in the European Parliament for the Green Party, so it's very often my role to uh, ask critical questions. Um, and so I'm questioning very often uh, uh, whether these, these rules and that rule of law is put in place in practice and how do you measure that? Uh, to me personally I have three, three um, ways to, to look at it and this is first of all as I'm a green person the question on environment. Are <coughs> environmental rules really applied in practice uh, um, uh, in, at projects where there's not that much attention <coughs> Uh, as an example, to just swap a little bit to Montenegro, where I'm also part of the delegation, to bring an example, Dorito National Park, or the, the, the question of the Salina, yeah, where there is already some European attention. Uh, uh, how how are, are these concerns dealt with? And, and is there a rule of law that are, is put in practice? Or the question on civil society. Is civil society seen as a threat to the state, or is civil society seen uh, as part of, of what makes a modern state and as, as something that contributes uh, to the development of a society in a positive way? Even though civil society is critical sometimes, I think that's also the role of civil society. But like, is it, so is it also co-funded by the state? Is, are the contributions from civil society welcomed by the state? Uh, and and uh, or is is the state um, directly supporting civil society in the job they got to do? Uh, and the third question that I try to to measure um, is is the is the question of media freedom. Uh, I'm constantly raising that issue also in our delegations. 
Um, and media freedom is so, not just the theory that you theoretically are uh, able to publish whatever you like, but uh, again, the question is how is it put in practice? Is there a funding for independent media? Or is funding only going to, let's say, media that seem to like the current government? Um, are journalists safe in that country? Or do they have to fear physical attacks? Do they have to fear, uh, if they're attacked, do they, is there a, a proper juridication? Yeah? Are, are, are the cases really followed? Uh, is there some convictions? Yeah? So is the overall uh, uh, mood in the country providing a secure workspace for journalists? And last but not least, how are journalists uh, treated within the state-owned or state-influenced or close to state media? Is it possible there to also raise concerns? Is it possible there to raise critical questions? Uh, and and uh, there also we must say that, well, there's still vital concerns from the European side whether that is really uh, in place. To uh, just point a light on Bosnia, well, Bosnia is the state, I would say, uh, of the whole Western Balkans that has the least perspective to an accession yet. Um, uh, the, I, I still, I mean, I'm, I'm not very sure how frank and how open I should be about that, but um, in a state where one part of the population is very much uh, aiming towards watching and leaning towards uh, the neighbor state in concrete uh, Serbia and also having the possibility to apply Serbian passports if Serbia enters the European Union, which I would very much welcome, as I would welcome the whole Western Balkans very much in the European Union, uh, then these people would be uh, able to apply European passport by the Serbian side. Then you have the Croatian citizens uh, who, uh, or let's say, the ones that see themselves as part of the Croatian uh, part of Bosnia, who many of them have European passports as Croatia as a member of the European Union. So the only ones that are left behind in that state without uh, actually actual accession to neighbor states or to the European Union is the Bosniaks or the so-called uh, more or less Muslim believing population of Bosnia. And I think this is a situation that should really concern us, that should really worry us. Uh, because uh, I think if we want to give a perspective, we should treat people equally. Uh, and we should really look closely uh, how to um, motivate uh, uh, the inclusion of the Bosniak population closer to accession uh, talks or closer to um, options to enter the European Union, to study in the European Union, and to become part of our common uh, European society. Uh, otherwise, if we're not doing that, we will see uh, encouraged Turkish influence, encouraged Saudi Arabian influence, and a decrease of a liberal uh, uh, Muslim belief, which I think is uh, a real big, uh, should be a big wish of the European Union to include that as a part of uh, what we call our common.